Hi, this is Heidi from Snappy Tots, and I want to show you some new yarn that I got in the mail. Red Heart sent me their new Loop It Finger Looping Fun yarn, and I wanted to kind of show show it to you and tell you what I did with it. There are a lot of very cute patterns, projects out there already. So the best way to do this is to just take the the wrap wrap. Okay, so this yarn has all these little loops and it is really the softest um fluffy yarn ever. It is rated a 7. I I have to admit, I was a little intimidated, so I watched a whole bunch of videos. But Marley Bird, who is the Red Heart spokeswoman, she suggests taking and cutting this first loop to give you a little bit more of a tail to work with. She actually cuts it right at the bottom. And if you if you kind of pull these apart, you'll see there's this little tiny strand. She does not pay that much attention to it. She just sticks her scissors in here and cuts. See? Look, that was easy. So I was like, okay, woohoo! First, first step down. I got this. Okay, then I tried, uh, there's a couple of different stitches they do, and people have made scarves and hats and all these wonderful things. Here's what I decided. I thought, you know what? I wonder if I could, wonder what would happen if I used a crochet hook with this. So that is what I am going to show you today. Look how fluffy. Okay, so this was the second ball of yarn that they sent me. This one is called Tickle Pink and Purple. Isn't that the cutest name? Tickle Pink and Purple. So cute. So of course I thought of my granddaughter Lucy who was born um, in January. I'm really tickled pink and purple with how it turned out. Grab. This is a P hook. I cut then loop. So to get started with this, I tried a couple of different things. and I'm going to show you what I found to work the very best to give us a nice start. All I'm going to do is wrap the yarn around my hook once. I'm not going to pull the yarn through or anything. I'm just going to wrap it around once. Okay, so let me show you that again. All I did was take and wrap it around my hook. Okay, so it's just loose. It's not, it's, it's just, it's not really attached yet. We're going to use the first loop to do that. So now that I've wrapped this on, I'm kind of holding it here. I'm in control. I'm going to take the first loop and I'm going to pull it through. Now, pull it through this that's on my hook. <clears throat> the loop is bigger than we're used to. So if I just go to try and pull it through, it's my hook is not going to grab it. So I stuck my hook through the loop, pushed my finger up to kind of control the tension more, and then I grabbed that loop and pulled it through. Okay, so there I am attached. I'm not going to count this as a stitch or chain. I'm, I'm attached. So you'll notice that the loops go all different ways. And I think this is where my brain kind of went, ah, I'm trying to get all the, I spent more time doing this than necessary. So don't, you don't really need to pay attention to it too much. I mean, you don't want them to like sit here and twist and twist and twist, kind of get them in the general ballpark. And then I'm just going to chain. I need a chain of 17. Now this is not a chain. This is a, my first attached to my hook. Okay, that's all I've done so far. Attached it to my hook. I'm going to insert my hook into the first loop and stick my finger through whatever you need to do if you just want to do it this way. Just kind of grab onto that loop to control your gauge and pull it through. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just kind of holding on to that the loop as I do it so that it will go through the loop. Okay, so I have three, one, two, three, and I'm just going to keep doing that all the way across. Now, after we get our first chain, our, <clears throat> our chain created, um, you'll get a fill for working with this in this way. If you wanted and you didn't have the size hook, you could also just do this with your fingers, kind of in the same way that they're using the yarn, I'm just going to pull the loop through, reach in, 
pull the loop through and just keep doing it that way. That created a little bit less, a little bit looser chain than I was doing. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, <clears throat> but you can do certainly do it that way if you want. So just going to keep insert my hook, grab onto the base so that it uh, I'm holding on to it and I can keep my gauge, my tension, not my gauge, my tension, wrong word, sorry about that. So I need 17, so let's count. And I know this white on my white table is not the best. Two, three, four, five. I need a few more. 14, 15, 16, and 17. Now, there's my beginning chain. And so I got to the end of this chain and I thought, oh, I want to chain one and turn. How am I going to do that? So I played around with a few things and here's what I ended up doing. I'm going to pull this loop up a little bit higher, a little snugger than I normally would. Then <clears throat> I'm going to kind of pivot my piece. And I'm going to start working back across my chain. So I'm going to start into the second chain and I'm going to just insert my hook underneath a loop and pull up a loop. Okay, so now I have two loops on my hook. Now I'm going to use the next loop and pull through. Now this is different than how I did my beginning chain. Remember we were just pulling one loop through at a time. This time I'm going to use both of these next two loops for my, I'm doing a single crochet. Okay, so I'm going to insert my hook going to stick my hook into the next loop and pull up a loop and stick my hook into the next loop and I have so now I have three loops I'm going to pull it through remember I'm holding this to give it some tension and there we go okay and then I'm just gonna keep doing that so see my begin see my chain it's for me, and it might be different for you, you can just kind of stretch it around, but one side is a little bit tighter than the other. See, tighter, looser, it's my chain. A bit tighter on this side, a little bit looser. I'm just going to stick my hook into that beginning chain, pull up a loop with the next loop, go to the next loop and pull it through both loops on my hook and I'm just going to keep working across that way. Okay, so we're getting close to our end. I have two more stitches here. One, two. More chains actually. Chain is a stitch, but we're going to keep calling it a chain so I don't confuse you. So notice I'm just kind of having to grab it a little, kind of a little weird just to hold it to keep my tension. After we get this first row in, it's a ton easier. Okay, so here we are at the end. Okay, 16. Now, <clears throat> this is my turning chain. This is that one loop that I pulled up a little bit higher, so we don't count that. See how it's on the side? It doesn't get to play on our game. He's on the side. Here's my 16 stitches. So. Now I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm not going to pull up another loop at the end. I'm just going to take the one that's on my hook and I'm just going to give it a tug so it's taller. Then <clears throat> I'm going to rotate the piece. Normally I would go this way, but it kind of puts it in the front and kind of is weird. So I found it was easier for me to, when I was at the end, to take and turn the piece so it goes towards me and there's the strand is on the back and some of you may turn like this anyway I usually turn my piece this way flip it over but for this project I want you to take and flip it so the tail comes towards you and over if you do it the other way it's not that big of a deal it just I found me personally it was easier to do it this way okay so now I am going to insert my hook to do a single crochet in this first space right below my, I'm calling this loop, my turning chain. 
even though I didn't chain, I just pulled it up higher. Right there, that's where I'm going to go. So I'm going to stick my hook into that first spot. I'm going to grab the very next loop and pull it up. So I have two loops. Now I've got this next loop and I'm going to use that to finish off my single crochet. I'm just going to keep going that way. Now check yourself every so often and make sure you didn't like forget that loop and go over here because then you have this weird little doggy ear on the back. So next spot. See how if I pull this apart? Finger spots. See where all my spots are? Okay, so hook in the next one. Pull up a loop. I'm going to use the next loop to finish it off. Now, like I said, <clears throat> all these little flippy things, I don't want them to be super twisted, but I'm not, if you notice, I'm not really paying that much attention to are they all up or down or whatever. I'm just inserting my hook. I'm finding that next loop, sticking it on my hook, pulling it up, going to the next loop, grabbing it. So they end up all pretty much going up, but they might have been just flipped a little bit fun funky and that's okay. That's no big deal. So I'm just going to keep repeating this across. So I'm finding my placement. See these holes? That's where they're going to go. And again, let's see if I wanted to do this with my finger, I would stick my finger in the next, the next little hole and pull up a loop. Do, do. Now I have two. Next one, I'm going to then stick this loop through both of those two. Yes, can be done. Easier for me with a hook because, you know, my brain says, I'm crocheting with a hook. Where's my hook? So, yes, I'm the weirdo that has to do the finger yarn with her, with her crochet hook. So I'm just going to do that all the way across. Now, when you get to the end, we've been working in all of the spaces. When I get to the end, if you notice, this jogs in quite a bit. So I need one more at the end. So just find that last, that last loop and that's where your last stitch is going to go. Pull that up and pull it through. All right. And then remember, I'm going to take my last loop, pull it a little bit tall little bit taller and this is how much I have left so I'm going to do one one more row to finish this off so I've got my little bit taller loop and my first stitch remember goes right there in that hole I'm going to grab the next loop pull it up grab the next loop and pull it through both remember I'm sticking my finger there for the gate for the tension up, grabbing it and going through and that's what I'm going to do all the way across to the end of my row And as you get going, you'll get a hang for it. You'll get a hang of it and, and get a feel for it, how to what works best for you. little black fuzzies on my workspace today. So there's my little lovey blanket for Lucy. Do 
using one skein, I am able to get about a 12 and a half by 10 and a half inch rectangle. So now I'm at the end and you're thinking, well, now what do we do? Got all these weird loops and I don't want all this bulkiness. Okay, so I got thinking, what if I cut the yarn again like I started and give me a tail? Okay, easy as that. So I'm going to cut two to give me a little bit longer tail. You can even cut three if you wanted. And then I'm going to just cut that off. And so now I've got this that I can work with. I've got my last loop. I'm going to pull this through and I cinch it down. And then I'm going to just take this yarn tail. First, I'm going to stick my hook in between the last stitch and pull it up. And that will help pull that little nub down. Then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to weave it in and out a couple of different directions to secure it because especially since this is going to be um, a little toddler using this and hopefully she'll love it and carry it everywhere and might have to be washed and things like that. I want it to hold its shape and I, I mean I want it to, I don't want it to come apart. <laughs> I want it to um, stay together and everything. So I'm just going to continue to work this chain. I'm going to go a couple different directions. So I'm going to go this way a little bit and I'm going to zigzag back and forth so that it locks it into place. I'm going to go back and do the same thing with this beginning yarn tail. And there's that lovey. All right, I am now ready to start the little lamb part of our lovey, and we're going to be using white lupit yarn by Red Heart. And what I've done is I want to be able to leave the loops out this time. And so to do that, I'm going to cut the bottom of every other loop. I've started that here, starting with the first loop you come to, you're going to cut that one, skip one, so that we've got some chain space in between. So I'm going to do that. Now let me give you a couple of tips. The first one I started working on, cut the first one, skipped one. When I went to cut the next one, I cut too far, too far over to the side. And as you can tell, I cut the yarn off. So there is a specific way we need to do this. Like I said before, there is a thinner strand between at the base of the loops. That's what we are actually cutting. So you can, if you want to be super careful, just snip it right there. Make sure that you're leaving a loop skipping that one and then I'm going to do this one. Now you can just stick your scissors in and just push down and that's where the strand is. Skip one. See how I'm getting some tension with the loop, pushing down with my scissors and cutting it. That helps find that little strand that's in between. So I'm just going to go along and do a length of those. All right. Then I'm going to take that same 11 millimeter hook. This time I'm actually going to come close to the end as I can and I'm going to put it on my hook as I normally would. So I'm actually attaching it. Okay, and I'm not going to insert my hook into the loop this time. I am not. We're not doing this. Okay, we're only going to work with the yarn strands between. So I've got a little bit of space here. I'm going to use that for a chain. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through. I'm going to leave that loop. Then I'm skipping over that and I'm going to chain two between each loop. Okay, so I should have three now. I'm going along. So push the loop out of your way one, 
and two. Again, one and two. So I'm not, I don't want this little lamb head to be gigantic. So I'm only going to start with nine chains so that I'm going to end up with eight stitches. Okay. Right now I have seven, so I need two more. So I'm going to skip the next loop. I'm going to chain one and two. Now, and I have five loops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chains. Okay, since I ended with a loop right there, I'm going to pull, I'm going to do chain one more, actually, sorry, chain one more, and I'm going to pull this loop up a little bit so that I can work back across my chain and insert my hook, working only with those strands, I'm going to pull up a loop, push that loop out of the way, yarn over and pull through both hooks, I mean both loops on my hook. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going across. There's my next chain, insert into the chain, grab onto the yarn strand, push the loop out of my way, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. Next chain, pull up a loop, push the loop out of the way, yarn over, through two. Next loop, pull up a loop. Next chain, sorry, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I'm just gonna keep working that way across until I have done all of them. Then if you remember, you need to be taking out every other loop. So as we keep going, you might have to stop occasionally and, and clip some of those loops so that you can keep having a yarn strand in between. Now, I, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking this would be adorable hair on one of my Miss Snappy dolls. <laughs> we would love this because I, I do the loop stitch for their hair. And this would be <clears throat> very cute. Okay, now, <coughs> I didn't keep up. I need to cut a couple of loops. Skip a loop. Take your time doing this part so you don't accidentally clip the wrong loop. Make sure you're skipping a loop. Carefully cutting the next loop. Skip a loop. Okay, that gives me a few more to work with. Where am I now? Okay, so pull that one through. I'm gonna pull it a little bit taller so that I can turn. But I wanted to show you. Look at all those cute loopies. See, doesn't it look like a lamb? It just looks like lamb hair to me. Lamb fur, whatever lambs have. So we're just gonna keep going. Okay, so remember, we're not gonna chain one. This loop actually takes the place of our chain one. So we're turning the piece towards us. Just going to insert our hook in the next space. Pull up a loop. Push those yarn, those loops out of the way and pull it through. Loop. Now, <clears throat> you should notice these loops are now ending up on the wrong side of our piece. We're going to take care of that in just a second. So just keep going along. Don't worry about those just yet. Remember, we're not worrying about those loops just yet. They're on the wrong side, but that's okay.
I need to just stop and cut a bunch of loops because I'm not <clears throat> I keep running out of yarn to use. So obviously you can cut quite a ways in advance. Just make sure I'm skipping a loop each time. It's squeaky yarn. Squeaky, squeaky. And one more. All right. So we've got <clears throat> loops on this side, and loops on this side. Okay. Or a little lammy. And I'd like to have them all on the same side. So the ones that I just did, got some pink fuzzies there. I am going to take my hook from the front and pull that loop through. I'm just going to do that all the way across. This first one needs to come to this side. So I'm just using my hook. Going through the spaces of the row I just created, just grabbing that loop, pulling it through and pulling it snug. And then this way they'll all be on that same side. So where am I sticking my hook? Just in between the stitches that I just made, I'm just pulling it through to the front. Really, you don't have to be exact about this. We just want to get those loops into the front. Okay, so our little lammies coming together. It's gonna be like this, and then we can add this little face to it when we're done. We just have a little bit more to go. So we're gonna just continue the same way and pulling up a loop. I'm not doing a chain one because that, um, that is not where I am. All right, so we're just going to continue on. Going to go ahead and cut a few more loops. Now, what if you do end up cutting this the wrong way and it cuts that whole end off? Um, you can start with a new piece, cut a, the first couple loops, take that yarn tail and tie it to the yarn tail that you have. You might have to cut a couple loops here and there to give you some more yarn, but we're just, there's always a way to make it work. So I'm pulling up the loop, my current loop on my hook, just a little bit taller, about the same length as one of the loops is sticking out. <clears throat> That's my turning chain. I'm going to turn the piece towards me again. Insert my hook before that first stitch, pull up a loop, skip a loop, push it back behind, and then pull it through. I'm just going to continue across. So pull up a loop, push the loop out of the way, yarn over, pull through two. Because this is so thick, this makes for a, a pretty quick project. Once you get the hang of it, the <clears throat> it grows really fast. Grows and goes. <laughs> the project grows in size and it goes along <clears throat> fairly quickly. Cut. 
I should have just started out by, I could have cut probably half the skein of every other loop. So if you wanted to prepare ahead of time, I just wasn't quite sure how much I would need, but I'll be able to give you a better idea. All right, so our little lamby guy is coming together really well. So this is how he's going to go on there. And we're going to sew this end, give him a little face, some little ears. All right, so I need to sew that beginning and the closing edge together, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use this yarn to do that. So I'm gonna cut every loop for a few loops to give me some yarn to sew with. Okay, and that. So <clears throat> with this last loop, I'm just going to pull through. <clears throat> Do you think it'll fit through my yarn needle? <laughs> this is a big eye yarn needle. So you're going to need a big one. I'm going to fold my piece in half. So the this is the last edge that I just worked on. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm just going to slip through both layers and sew these two seams together. And what I like about using um, the same yarn, they, no matter what kind of novelty yarn I'm using, I like to use that yarn to seam it off. And the reason why is because it hides in there so nicely. And where this is a thick, plushy yarn, it also adds to the plushiness. <laughs> Um, she just makes him fluffy. Okay, and I have enough yarn till there that I can seam this end as well. So I'm going to take and just stick my yarn needle through so that I can use it on this side. I'm going to, my beginning yarn till I'm just going to stick it in there because it's in the way. Line up my stitches so I know where to start. And I'm just going to seam this edge, keeping, making sure that all of my little loopy guys stay exposed so that I can see them and I don't flatten them all. So one of these edges will be the little sheepies, little lamb, sheep, whatever it is, his little bum. And the other is where we're going to put his face. Okay, so this strand, I should have left just a little bit longer and I can use that to sew it Um to the lubby lubby so we kind of have this little squiggly ball which i think would be a fun little toy for babies as well so <clears throat> this is what we are going to use the opening i'm going to put just a little bit of stuffing in actually i'm just going to take I've got these little yarn tell little yarn ends here i'm just going to stick those in there and that is going to go against the lubby like this and we're going to get the face added and the ears and a cute little bow. My other one came off a lot. <laughs> I'm going to end up unwrapping this whole thing. La la la. It's soft and fun to play with. I uh, obviously did something wrong there. So. Uh, okay. Well, I will tell you that the other skein I opened, it was right there on top. And obviously I <laughs> did something weird there. Because now I have created a monster. Anyway. But, uh, let's find the end. Here it is. And try not to have this all messed up. Let's back out just a little bit. So, <laughs> okay. So here's our end. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I have both ends. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just tuck that away. We'll not look at that for a second. 